All right. Hey, VC, I'm Jamie. Welcome back. We're back with another video. And this time it's a three CD set compilations uh, that I'm going to show uh, from the Grapefruit label uh, found on Cherry Red Records out of the UK. And I want to thank Emma uh, from Aid Vinyl Low for introducing me uh, to this. Uh, she had shown one of the uh, box sets. I was able to pick up a few more. Uh, but these are just nice little three CD box sets, and uh, we'll get to those. And I do have some vinyl uh, that I'll show as well as part of this video. So again, thanks to Emma from Aid Vinyl Low. She showed this uh, three CD uh, blues box set. It's just a nifty little box set. And, uh, you know, she really enjoyed it, uh, raved about it. So I thought, man, that looks fantastic. And thanks to Emma, um, I wouldn't have necessarily come across this. I don't think I would have known about it had she not shown it on one of her videos. And again, that's the great thing about the VC, just introducing us to great music. So what she showed was this uh, three CD box set, uh, just a nifty little box set called uh, Crawling Up a Hill, A Journey Through the British Blues Boom 1966 to 1971. How amazing is that? So again, they're just nice little clamshell uh, boxes, uh, three CD box sets. But how about John Mayles Blues Breakers, The Yardbirds, Original Fleetwood Mac. You've also got uh, Spencer Davis Group on this one. Also Free, Jeff Beck, uh, The Grand Bond Organization, Alexis Corner, Ten Years After, Chicken Shack, and so many more. Now, hopefully my fingers are, <laughs> weren't in front of all the uh, compilations. They do have them on the back of the CD, so I'll show you that. And so, yeah, these are just nice little um, clamshell style. Again, this is on the Grapefruit label uh, from Cherry Red Records out of the UK. So the uh, booklet just sits on top and then the CD's inside. So I won't take too, too long on the booklet, but that shows you some of the other uh, box sets that you can get. I've only been able to find uh, two more. Now, they have a number of uh, compilations. Most of them are three CD compilations. Uh, this is the only blues one. And then they do have a few uh, box sets that uh, take a look at various artists uh, like the tremolos. But uh, these are nice booklets, well documented and uh, write ups on each and every song, uh, each and every group that's included, vintage photos, you know, nice. And then the center usually has some spread of either vintage posters, flyers or ticket stubs, that kind of thing. But these are really, really nice. And then the CDs uh, for this one have nice kind of alternate takes. Uh, here's a nice uh, alternate uh, photo for uh, John Mayall and the Blues Breakers uh, featuring Eric Clapton there. And there it's the uh, tracks that are included on this one. And the mastering is great. The CDs sound great. And they fill up each CD too. Like usually most of the CDs, uh, like for this one, has 19 tracks. But often there's 19, 23, 26 tracks, you know, depending on the on the uh, style of the music. So we have that one, and then we also have uh, Taste featured on this one. But yeah, they really fill up the CDs. There's that. And then here is a nice uh, alternate shot with Jeremy Spencer. But yeah, these are terrific and fairly reasonably priced, too. They're not too, too bad. So there you have the blues one uh, that's called Crawling Up a Hill. And again, uh, thanks to Emma from uh, 8 Vinyl Low for showing that. And I did manage to find two other ones. As I say, some are hard to find, some not too bad. Uh, this one is called A Slight Disturbance in My Mind, uh, the British Proto-Psychedelic Sounds of 1966. Like, how cool is that? So again, this one, again, three CD uh, set that features the creation, also Pretty Things, uh, the Yardbirds. And what I like about these are compilations. It's not just the typical singles released from these bands. Uh, a lot of obscure tracks, uh, the Kinks also, John's Children, the Hollies, the Move, David Bowie. So there you go. So there's this one. And again, this is the, the uh, Grapefruit uh, label. Again, Clamshell. Booklets uh, just right up on top like that. And again, well-documented, nice booklets, lots of information on all of the bands. Vintage photos, and uh, let's see if we can find the uh, center spread. There you go with that. And this follows the same format where it has some of the other compilations that you can get in the series. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the discs. Uh, first off, we've got to disc one. 
there's that. And again, the mastering is great. These are just a pleasure to listen to for sure. There's that one. And there's that uh, disc two. Oops. But again, had Emma not shown the one, I don't think I would have ever come across this series. And I don't think I've been as excited about a series like this and some of the vintage uh, Rhino uh, CD box sets or compilations that came out in the 90s. Just, you know, well-documented, lots of great music. So it's I'm just really excited to come across this uh, these particular CDs. I think they're just great. You know, introducing me to a lot of music I might not have had access to before. Okay, so there's that one. And I do have uh, one more. Again, a lot of their box sets uh, do focus on kind of uh, progressive pop or psychedelic pop, uh, that sort of thing. Again, all, obviously all with a British uh, focus. And this one is called New Moons in the Sky, the British Progressive Pop Sounds of 1970. And how cool is that? You got to Procol Harum on this one, uh, Marmalade's uh, Status Quo or Status Quo. And uh, also uh, so many bands uh, like Plastic Penny. Oh, fantastic. Like really nice. Hawkwinds featured on this one. Barkley James Harvest, Procol Harum. And as I say, they really fill up the CDs quite nicely, which is great. Hopefully you can see that okay. And again, the same format. And we'll take a look at the discs again, the same others that you can pick up in the series. So they simply open like this. Well documented, and here's the center spread. Very nice. You know, it's just really fun. How much fun is this? Okay, and the first disc. And there's everything that's involved. And these ones, these discs are a little bit more, a little bit more fun, a little bit more colorful. And we have disc two. These are some fun labels on this one. And lastly, disc three. That's a fun, I like that one. But yeah, seeking out others uh, in the series, um, but some are kind of hard to find. But I uh, was able to come across at least three of them, but I will seek out other ones for sure. But how fun is that? So that is on uh, the Grapefruit Label from Cherry Red Records out of the UK. That is just a lot of fun. Okay, let's uh, show a few uh, albums uh, for sure. Got to get some vinyl in. I uh, picked this up just the other day at uh, my local Value Village or thrift store. Uh, this artist is Jean Piero Reverbere. Reverbe. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He's an Italian uh, conductor, composer. Uh, now, uh, this was a blind buy at the Value Village. I thought, well, this looks interesting. It's called Stairway to Heaven. And sure enough, Proper credits for Stairway to Heaven, Plant and Page. So I thought, is this kind of a jazz kind of take? Because it looks like fairly, you know, you got drums, electric guitar, acoustic guitar. You've also got flute, uh, soprano sax. So I thought, yeah, I'll definitely take a chance for sure. Now, it's a little bit more orchestrated for my taste. But having said that, uh, once you get past the first a couple of tracks, then it gets a little bit more, I don't want to say jazzy, but more... The instrumentation is really interesting, particularly on Stairway to Heaven. And instead of sort of, uh, you know, the sort of that Jimmy Page guitar, you're going to get done either on keyboard, uh, some big orchestration through that, but it kind of works. So this was an interesting uh, record. This came out in 1977. As I said, he's an Italian artist. And if you're looking information up about uh, this artist, uh, he is Jean Pierre Reverbe or Reverbe, but his brother's name is Jean Franco. Rebel Bay. So, and they're born just a few a few years apart, so can get a little confusing. But uh, this was a yeah a, a fun pickup, and this was on United Artists, and I think this is the first time I have ever seen a United Artists sleeve. There you go. And again, this is the 
typical sleeve that shows you other stuff that you can get at the time, mid-70s, but I've never seen a United Artists sleeve, so I thought that was pretty cool, and on United Artists label. So yeah, it's a fun record, interesting, interesting pickup for sure. Okay, and uh, slowly getting some Tragically Hip on vinyl. Uh, this is the Tragically Hip, one of the great ones, uh, Trouble at the Hen House, of course, Tragically Hip, a wonderful Canadian band. Uh, featuring the late uh, Gord Downey. Uh, this one uh, came out on CD in 1996. I don't think it was initially released on vinyl until uh, just fairly recently. This came out in 2017. So this is a double album, but it's three sides, uh, which is often, not often, but you're seeing when CDs are reissued on vinyl, they're doing three sides, but usually the fourth side is etched. Uh, not, not in this case, but uh, I mean, the, the sound is great. And this is uh, Tragically Hip, again, a rockin' Canadian band. They were a little bit more acoustic on this one. Uh, this had some great songs, like Ahead by a Century was a major Canadian hit. Um, and a nice heavyweight vinyl. Not to lined sleeves, just a straight paper, but not lined. Um, but really nice vinyl. And sort of the custom labels, that and that. So that's side one and side two. And then you have side three. And I've never quite seen this before, so I'll show you side three, and they do it A, B, and C. And then for side D, they simply say, this side does not play. <laughs> I've never quite seen that before. I would have thought, you know, they'd have some sort of etching or something, but not continuing with the custom labels, but with this side does not play. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Uh, again, it's kind of, you know, the the issue of taking CDs, which were often maybe 50 to 60 minutes or whatever, and then transferring them onto vinyl, and you don't want to cut any songs, so it's kind of three sides. And, you know, we have seen that before, but usually there's some sort of etching or something or something unique to the fourth side, but just the <laughs> to have the label. This side doesn't play. I thought it was pretty funny. Okay, we go from Tragically Hip to Tim Curry, of course, of uh, Rocky Horror fame. And, of course, uh, Tim Curry, wonderful, wonderful actor. Uh, his solo career, uh, not quite as engaging. Uh, interesting for this, this came out in 1979. I think this was one of his final solo albums. Uh, Dick Wagner is all over this. Now, Dick Wagner was the uh, guitarist for Alice Cooper from uh, Welcome to My Nightmare uh, on. Uh, so the guitars are a little turned up in this one. Uh, Dick Wagner does most of the uh, co-writing. Uh, on this album it's not bad but even then at the same time it just doesn't quite work uh the final track on here a song called charge it is it's a little embarrassing the, the lyrics are a little uh yeah <laughs> it just it doesn't work I, what can i say but uh, on a and m but uh you know the voice is great uh, you know tim curry gives it his all but yeah just didn't really quite have the material but uh, interesting to say the least Okay, how about uh, some Boz Skaggs, and this is the album Slow Dancer. Uh, this is the alternative uh, album cover. I actually prefer this one to the original. The original is just him in like a Speedo on the shore, and it's called uh, Slow Dancer, which to me doesn't quite make a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, I think this, this cover kind of matches the idea uh, behind it. But, uh, you know, nice, nice Boz Skaggs record. I do like Boz Gags, just in terms of his sound. Interesting voice and uh, interesting approach. So Boz Gags there. Always enjoy coming across uh, Elvis Costello at any time. And this is Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Goodbye, Cruel World. And a nice record. Um, you know, what can I say? And uh, this one does uh, include the original uh, insert uh, for this. You know, especially when it's Elvis Costello and the Attractions, it's always a good thing. But another another great album. And uh, this on Columbia. Oops. Okay, Elvis Costello and the Attractions. I did pick up another Bruce Coburn album. Uh, this is Bruce Coburn and uh, High Winds and White Sky. Bruce Coburn, I believe. Oh gosh, is this his second album uh, from 1970? I do love that winter scene there. Now, the original, I believe, uh, was a gatefold, and the original uh, did include like a booklet. And what was interesting, uh, the original included like a booklet with the lyrics and further uh, other pictures, but the booklet was almost like CD size before CDs were, of course, even a thing, which was 
a little unusual. So this is a, a later pressing. It's not in gatefold. Uh, but for the booklet, I do have the uh, complete booklet when they uh, reissued uh, this album on CD. They included the, the full booklet. So I do have that on CD. Uh, and of course, on the classic True North label. Again, this is early Bruce Coburn. So it's just him, acoustic guitar, very uh, introspective. Uh, but it, one of the songs on here is called uh, One Day I Walk, which is an absolutely beautiful song. Okay, Paul Simon. You see this one a fair bit. Uh, Paul Simon, uh, Hearts and Bones. This was going to be a, a Simon and Garfunkel uh, album, but uh, of course uh, the two not getting along again, and reportedly Paul Simon then erased uh, any of Art Garfunkel's uh, vocals or vocal contributions uh, from the album. I believe that's true, but uh, I don't know to what extent. But uh, yeah, I mean, Hearts and Bones, you know, overall, it's a good album. Whether it would have worked as a Simon and Garfunkel album, I'm not sure. But a uh, nice uh, stylized label there. But uh, Paul Simon, the Hearts and Bones. Okay, I picked up a couple of uh, Greg Allman albums. Uh, Greg Allman, and this is the Greg Allman Band and Plan Up a Storm. How about that? Okay. Yeah, always enjoy picking up some Ray Allman. And yeah, his solo stuff is just, I mean, it's good. It's not as good as the Allman Brothers stuff. Um, some of it works, some of it doesn't work. Nice having this on the Capricorn label. So there's the one. And then the other is the Greg Allman Band with I'm No Angel. There you go, and uh, this one includes the uh, insert. That's a nice, nice portrait there. Hey, and uh, this is when he is on Epic, the Epic label. Okay, Greg Allman Band. Okay, picking up Al Stewart and uh, just doing some research on this. I guess this, this is actually the alternative cover, uh, the North American one, which is interesting. Uh, because I do believe that the cover, that this is a hypnosis cover. Of course, hypnosis did some of the great rock and roll covers, like for 10cc, particularly for Pink Floyd. Now, the original uh, just had like the Al Stewart and kind of like near the fireplace or something like that, a very sort of, I don't know, rustic or homey kind of scene. But it's interesting that the North American cover uh, featured this, which is a little bit more, you know, a little bit more interesting, shall we say. And I guess this is like... Uh, Doctor Strange from Marvel Comics, and uh, again with hypnosis, you can often see a little little bit of the nod to Marvel Comics here and again, not always, but uh, yeah, I thought that was a, at least a bit more of an interesting cover. That's what the original cover is, closer to that sort of uh, look, but this is really a nice album, uh, Al Stewart. Getting more of a, a fondness for Al Stewart uh, in my old age. And on the uh, Jonas or Giannis uh, records label. Okay. And we'll sh got time for one more. How about uh, this one? This is what? This is Crowbar. And long before there was Yes and 90125, there was the band Crowbar. Great Canadian band. Not to be confused with an American, more of a metal band called Crowbar. Uh, this is the Canadian band from the 70s. Had the massive hit, Oh, What a Feeling. Uh, kind of a real good time uh, band. But this is their album, KE32746, which is the name of the epic numbering for this label. So before there was, yes, 90, 90210, now I want to say 90210. Before there was, yes, 90125, uh, there was this. So again, the, the title of the album from the uh, record number. And Crowbar on Epic, and of course, KE32746. Seven, four, six. Uh, this one had a couple of radio hits. This was one of their last albums. Uh, this had the uh, hit Million Dollar Weekend, uh, got some radio play, and uh, All the Living Things uh, also got some radio play at the time. And um, let's do one more Canadian one. How about uh, the band Chalk Circle? A band that doesn't uh, has gotten kind of forgotten about. Chalk Circle had that sort of uh, alternate rock uh, kind of sound. Had a kind of a U2 sound, if you will. Uh, Chalk Circle, they had the, uh, a few Canadian hits, uh, This Morning, and also N-I-M-B-Y, so Not In My Backyard. They had a really good sound. They didn't have too many albums, though. They didn't stick around for too, too long. I think they had a reunion or two 
uh, over the years. But uh, for kind of kind of the you know alt rock, and, uh, and this came out in 1987 on du Duke Street Records, sounding kind of U2ish, uh, if you will. But uh, worth checking out if you're not familiar with this band, Chalk Circle. And what's really cool, um, I also remember the song uh, "21st Century uh, Man." Uh, which is a Mark Boland song, and they don't list it anywhere on here. No, sorry, excuse me. It's 20th Century Boy. That's the Mark Boland song, not to be confused with 21st Century Schizoid Man, which is a King Crimson song, talking about the song 20th Century Boy. And uh, they're kind of noted for their cover of that uh, Mark Boland T-Rex song. But what's bizarre is it's not included uh, on the song listings here, but it is included on the label. So it's kind of a hidden track and it's included as the last song on side one, which I thought was really interesting. But uh, I remember that song and that song often comes up as part of the repertoire, but uh, it's kind of featured as a hidden track on that song, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, again, we'll uh, chat again real soon and hope everybody's doing well out there. So do take care, bye-bye.